Previously on Sue Thomas, FBI. Adam Kinsey's coming here? Adam Kinsey, the actor? He's not an actor. He's a movie star. So Mr. Kinsey's come to Washington to research his character and follow around some real live FBI super agents. Hi. Hello. You're friends with Tara, right? Is she seeing anyone? You did tell him I was available. I thought you might still be think Stanley. It's not like she could date Stanley anyway. He's been on assignment in Chicago for three months. I was wondering if you're not seeing anyone, maybe you'd like to. I'd love to. We just got word. Two more tanker trucks have been reported missing. You think terrorists stole those trucks? I'm not sure if this is something you should be a part of. You're saying I have to leave? That's what I'm saying. This sounds a little paranoid to me. When you have to be right 100% of the time, you're allowed to be paranoid. Terrorists only have to be right once to succeed. Bobby, Miles, you have just won an all-expenses paid trip for two to Malaysia. Miles and I are in the Beal Mustafa's apartment. Is Mustafa giving you anything? But the Malaysians are giving every indication they're going to give him back to Yemen unless we take him ourselves in the next 24 hours. A plane's gone missing. A 727 cargo plane. It was parked in the Mojave airport. Now it's gone. No one can find it. we got to bring Mustafa back here, Bobby. Something's going on, and he's our best bet to find out what it is. I got a bad feeling about this. No, no media on this case. We don't want the 24-hour news cycle giving Al-Qaeda the play-by-play -play on how we're going to stop them. What, tell them that the missing cargo plane and the tankers are part of a David Copperfield disappearing act. I don't know. You're the head of FBI media relations. Handle it. Okay, thanks. More bad news on Hamad Ramad. Our FBI legal in Saudi Arabia found out he's a pilot for Pan Arabian Airways. So if he did steal the cargo plane, he's able to fly it anywhere? Or into anything. My contact at the FAA thinks the stolen plane from Mojave is an inside job. Yeah, Lucy, I'm in the hallway. I'm an on my way in. the controller stole the plane? My contact says the sophistication of how it was stolen is chilling. Tell me they know where the plane is. Start analyzing the data. What about the files of Miles and Bobby sent from Malaysia? That's priority number two. For now, this is priority number one. I told you I was coming in. I'm just trying to warn you, there is a Lyle Cannon, the deputy attorney general, hovering at your desk. He's not happy. It's never a good thing when they come to see you. There's another problem. Unless it's a direct and immediate threat to national security, I'll handle it after I put out a few of these fires. OK. Since when does the deputy attorney general make house calls? The FBI is a division of the Justice Department last time I checked, so we kind of own this house. I got a problem with your management skills. I've explained to Lyle here that you're the case agent helping to coordinate the transport of Nabil Mustafa from Malaysia to the U.S. That's the other problem I was trying to mention. Want to get lost looking for the exit? I got secret level clearance from the Defense Department. The chairman of the House Appropriation Committee, you know, the committee that decides how much funding the FBI gets, uh, turns out he's one of my biggest fans. Congressman Wellman called the Secretary of Defense who called the director of the FBI, and now he's got clearance. I think the term they used was unprecedented access. Don't you have urgent business to attend to? What's next? Go magazine gonna follow us around? Demetrius tells me you've got a military plane sitting on a tarmac in Malaysia waiting to fly Mustafa back. The Malaysian government wants him out of their country. The Yemeni government wants him back so that they can kill him. We need him here because we believe he has information that will help us stop a terrorist attack. You were made aware of our intent to bring him here. Yeah, and I denied the request. Which you had no authority to do. That decision was made by FBI agents in the field in Malaysia. You put him on that plane and you own him for life. If you can't prove he's a terrorist, he goes free in America with full political asylum. That's the law. It's a risk I'm willing to take. I've got something. Put it up. This is a copy of the air traffic control tower's radar screen from the Mojave airport the night our missing cargo plane was stolen. The blips on the screen represent two planes with the same transponder signal. I thought every plane is supposed to have a different transponder code. They are, unless one copies the other in order to go undetected. Looks like a mid-air collision. The planes didn't collide. They became one. Or, as the FAA now thinks, one plane flew right below the other. Like four fighter jets flying in tight formation would only appear as one on a radar screen. 
The air traffic controllers on duty thought it was a computer screen malfunction, since there was no mid-air collision, and they just saw the double transponders for a couple seconds. That theory changed with the report of the stolen aircraft. So whoever was flying the second plane had to be an expert pilot. Hamad Hamad has that kind of training. The cargo plane could be anywhere. And what makes it more chilling is that it has the transponder technology to mimic any plane flying in U.S. airspace. So the plane could be flying at a target right now and we never know about it? Not until it hit what it was flying at. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders, That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes who I am I am Rosemary's granddaughter Everybody listen up. We just got back from our briefing at the FAA regarding our missing cargo plane. Seems as though one of their air traffic controllers was on vacation in Palm Springs during the time the cargo plane was stolen. Meet Samir Ibrahim. He's now our prime suspect. I didn't know it was illegal for a Muslim to vacation in Palm Springs. It's not. Before becoming an air traffic controller, Samir was a transponder programmer at Radar Signature Incorporated. We have a warrant to search Samir's house. Thanks to the wonderful Patriot Act. D, do we have to put up with this? No, I bet our founding fathers rolled over in their graves the day that act was created. I think our founding fathers rolled over in their graves on 9-11. You know, you might have a right to be here, but why don't you pretend you're on one of your movie sets, only this time your character doesn't have any lines. Say what we like or don't say anything at all. Adam, that's enough. We have work to do. We've interviewed some of Samir's fellow controllers, and they said he was constantly bragging about how easy it would be to trick air traffic control radar. They thought he was just being arrogant, but now it looks like he might just want to get chronicled in the dark side of history. It could mean that Ahmad is the pilot, and Samir is the co-pilot in charge of reprogramming the transponder in order to fool air traffic control radar. There's two terrorists on the plane, and we have no idea how many are involved with three stolen tanker trucks. And so far, we have no actionable leads. Tanker truck one, stolen in Virginia, has been missing for three days. Tanker truck two, stolen in Ohio, and truck three, stolen in New Mexico, have been gone less than 24 hours. At 60 miles an hour, these concentric circles are the farthest they could go. We got APBs out to all law enforcement, and we're making an intense search in this red zone. And the Virginia tanker could be anywhere. And time is not on our side on this one. Sue and Dee, why don't you finish up what you're doing and let's go to Samir's house. I hope you don't mind fraternizing with the enemy. Uh, we're all on the same side. Stanley! Uh, I thought you were in Chicago. Uh, no, I got called back to DC on an emergency assignment to break some code, uh, something about encrypted files in Arabic. I didn't know it was your task force till I got briefed upstairs. Huh. Uh, this is... Yeah, I know who you are. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Stanley Abbott. Uh, pleasure. Stanley and I... W worked together. Stanley? Glad to have you back. It's good to see you, Stanley. Looking forward to working with you all again. Now, here's a guy you might want to get to know. Works for the NSA. Helped us crack a terrorist code that stopped five office towers from being blown up. How many personal rights did we violate on that one? Is that a trick question?
So much for your shortcut to the airport. It'll still be quicker. Trust me, I could be a map maker if I wasn't a government employee. How long have you been heading south? We're not heading south. Anakima, ala al Kima. You speak Arabic? I speak seven languages. That's how I got the job of government liaison. Miles, it's an ambush. I'm not bad! Get out there! The dead end. Get ready to run. The welcome wagon coming up behind. Good thing I broke protocol and wore my sneakers! Bob? Miles was wearing a wire just in case Mustafa talked on the way to the airport. Bet he didn't know he'd be recording a near-death experience. I'll let Jack know they're on the plane and airborne. So the long uh, Arabic string Mustafa said in English means uh, Messenger Bazaar by 123. So how long have you and Adam Kinsey been friends? He's been here about a week. Uh, BazaarBuy.com is an online auction site, like eBay. Somehow I don't think Mustafa was worried about getting a good deal on an antique lamp. Maybe they used it to communicate. So, how was Chicago? Did you make any new friends? A few. Oh, that makes sense. Since you never responded to my last five emails. We see uh, four entries on BizarreBuy.com, all in Arabic, and you bid on the same lot number each time, number 123. So you're going out tonight with Adam. Work permits. We should run a frequency analysis on which screen names bid on what items, starting with last week and then going forward. Real time. Yeah. Decorator. Decorator. It's called terrorist chic, a minimalist style. Now only those things necessary for killing hordes of innocent people. Samir's not even here. Where's the evidence that he's a terrorist? Do you have a makeshift flight simulator in your living room? It's for Washington, D.C. Simulation terminated. There were 30 other cities on the simulator, each one with a plane flying into a major American landmark or some sort of complex. Any clue which target they're planning to hit? We ran a statistical analysis on how many times each flight pattern was practiced, but there was little or no variance. It could be any one of them. If they're practicing all of them, it could mean they don't know their final target. Fingerprints from Samir's house. There's his, of course. But Hamad Rahman's prints are all over the flight simulator as well. Stanley broke the encryption on Samir's laptop. We're analyzing them and cross-referencing them against the computer files from Malaysia. So far, we found one common document, a manifesto in Arabic. Death to America. Your skies will be full of black smoke. Your rivers will run with your traitorous blood. Death to the Jews and America. All of your false idols will come crashing down. Descriptive, not exactly poetic. <laughs> Rhymes a little better in Arabic. Jack, Bobby's online one from the transport plane. He says it's urgent. Hey, it's me. You sure the information's accurate? Okay, keep working in for more details. Yeah, hey, and great job. 
Bobby and Miles have found out who's behind the terror strikes. Arif Dessa. Who's that? Arif Dessa, known as the Prince of Terror. A distinction he earned by having only one thing listed in his daytime for the last decade. Kill Americans. Now he's back. Okay, the picture on the right is Arif Dessa from 10 years ago. The picture on the left is Arif Dessa from two months ago when we were surveilling him. Now there's a face that needs another extreme makeover. Hey! <laughs> hey, Stan the man. How you going, mate? Stanley, good to see you again. Come back. Glad to have you back. You gave us quite a scare. Oh, nothing like a little Al-Qaeda ambush to get the old heart in shape. Any info from our favorite frequent flyer? He confirmed what we already know, which is that Arif Des is a control freak and is the only one who knows the entire plan. Everyone else only knows their part. So, uh, what's the word on our missing yeah. trucks? And plane? Nothing yet. So, what? Arif is either planning to buy more weapons or he's waiting for the appointed day for a coordinated strike? That'd be my guess. It looks like the terrorists have been communicating through an online auction site called bazaarbuy.com. And we haven't been able to crack the code as of yet. We may have just caught a break. I just got a call from a Benny Edwards, local law enforcement, rural Virginia. That's less than 45 miles from where the first tanker was stolen. It looks like a local farmer saw a tanker going down a country road that dead ends into a farm. It's more than we had three seconds ago. Lucy, tell surveillance we need a plane to do a fly over the area. Tell Benny we're on our way. Hey, everybody, listen up. Our mapping surveillance plane took photos of the farm. There's two structures we need to hit. This barn, which is clearly big enough to house a tanker, and the farmhouse itself. This is uh, Sheriff Benny Edwards. He's the one who took the initial report. He knows the farmer. He's been in the farmhouse. He can give us the exact layout. First of all, it's great to be working with the FBI. The guys down the station call me a uh, special agent. Farmer Watkins is quite meticulous about his house, just as he is about farming. You know, modern farming is an exact science. Seed spacing, soil nutrients, crop rotation. Um, does Farmer Watkins have a family? Who else can we expect to find in the house? He lives alone. The love of his life is the earth and her bounty. Thanks, Benny. So, what do we reckon here, that Farmer Watkins has joined Al-Qaeda? It's more likely Farmer Watkins is dead and somebody's using his house as a hideout. No one has seen Tubby in more than a week. I, uh, checked with everybody down at the diner after I called you guys. Uh, Farmer Watkins is Tubby. Big eater. <clears throat> the answer to that question is that we don't know who's at the farm. We don't even know if that tanker is one of the ones that we're looking for. But we're gonna find out. Okay, get ready to strike in 30 minutes. Something on your mind, Stanley? Yes. I'm finding it quite challenging to work so closely to Tara when I sense that her heart is drawn to another. If you still have feelings for her, why didn't you ever return her emails when you were in Chicago? It was the most difficult thing I, I've ever had to do. Not to respond to her emails, but... I thought I was going to be transferred to Chicago permanently. I didn't think it was right to force her into a long-distance relationship. And it never crossed your mind to just call her up and talk about it? <laughs> uh, you make it seem so simple. Uh, I, I'm, I'm new at this dating entity, and, and I felt that my way was more chivalrous. Stanley, if, if you still care this much about her, you need to tell her. She has no idea why you did what you did. It's a Sam 39. We found the tanker. What are they doing to her? Quinn. Tanker truck's been repainted recently. Got a name, Allie Wilson, that's about it. 
claims she doesn't know anything about a stolen tanker. Says she's a friend of the man who lives here. Says she and her boyfriend, a bloke named Khalid, met Watkins passing through at a local diner. He is a big eater, isn't he? Mm. She says that the tanker's Khalid's since 9-11. No one will hire him. Farmer Watkins told them they could stay here and that he'd help them. Hey, hey, hey. hey. These cops are hurting me. Don't wiggle so much. Stop hurting her! Hey, hey! The character's not in this scene. Back up. You work with me, and I'll work with you on those cuffs. So tell us how you got into the uh, petrol business. Where did you really get the tanker? Huh? Didn't just follow you home. My shoulder hurts so bad. Please, if you have to cuff me, can you cuff me in the front? You guys have no right to do this to her. Adam, somebody, somebody shot him Uncuff up. Uncuff her now. Or I go on every talk show in America and tell them you beat women because they're Muslim. I am in pain. At least cuff her in the front. Please, just let me get my arms in front. Hey, right, I cuff her in front. Oh. Then she's going to answer some more questions. This is a joke. Oh. <sighs> Thank you. You're very kind. This is America. You have rights. You got 10 seconds to get this guy out of here before I make the front page of the tabloids for what I do to him. Right, all right, all right. What did you take? What is it? What happened? What happened? What did you take? Hold your hand. The tank we found on the raid yesterday was indeed the tanker stolen in Virginia. It was filled with gas and ready to become a bomb on wheels. One tanker down, true to go. This will come as no surprise to most of us, but the woman claiming to be Allie Wilson from yesterday is in fact a Yemeni woman named Naja Harat. Her fingerprints matched bomb making raids in uh, Palestine, Yemen, and uh, most recently Iraq. She trained in Al Qaeda camps in Afghanistan. It's also been confirmed. Cyanide poisoning is the official cause of death. I feel really sick about this, guys. Good. Welcome to our world. This isn't some fake Hollywood set. We're at war. And most of the time, we can't tell what our enemy looks like. Yeah, I feel sick too. Because we lost our best lead at stopping a terror strike. And because we let her die, a lot of Americans' blood may be on our hands. Farmer Watkins' car was pulled out of a pond on the premises. He's been killed, gunshot to the head. The ballistics from the bullet match those on the gun found in Naja's belongings. Which makes us believe the terror event could be soon. She wouldn't have killed him until she was ready to strike. We also believe she lied about there being a boyfriend, Khalid. There were no clothes or any other signs of him. Looks like she was uh, also a suicider. She had explosives already strapped into her suicide vest. However, thanks to modern technology, Naja may be speaking to us a little more than she hoped when she took her cyanide pill. The lab was able to retrieve communications to and from her Blackberry. She accessed the Bazaar Buy auction site as well the day she stole the tanker. I mean, every terrorist that we found to date has been communicating through that site. Uh, I have yet to crack the code as to what certain bids mean on certain items. We've also found multiple emails in Arabic to an untraceable email account. But here's the good part. Uh, they're love letters to Arif Dessa. Pretty steamy. If you know how Naja communicated with Arif, then you could make him believe that she was still alive. That's just what we were thinking. The communication has to be in Arabic, and it has to perfectly match the style and cadence in the way Naja Herat wrote. All right, you two sequester yourselves and write a terrorist Harlequin romance if you need to, but make it perfect. We've only got one shot at making Arif believe that Naja is missing him. Maybe enough for him to come see her. Everybody else, keep working your leads and checking with your sources. Investigate even the remotest of clues. Okay. 
I'm ready. I've translated every email on the Blackberry between Nadja and Arif Desif. And I'm going to need your help to try to figure out what she should say to him. Because uh, while I can crack 36 string terrorist encryption and decode complex steganography, apparently don't understand women. What is that supposed to mean? I guess when you said we had a great connection, that meant until the revolving door spun around and dropped somebody off with a little more star power. Uh, I don't appreciate being made out to be the bad guy here. Look, a cold-hearted terrorist wrote his girlfriend more times in a week than you wrote me in three months in Chicago. And then you come back and see somebody else has interest in me, so I've got your attention again. Tara? The tech lab needs you to explain the specs on the internet connection you want established to email Arif Dessa. They said they need it right away if you want to go online today. I'm on my way. I can't deal with this right now. It's not putting me in a very romantically creative writing mood. I don't want to disappoint Arif. Okay, fine. But I want you to know one thing. I know I may be competing against a global box office star, and I don't than much of a chance. But I'm not gonna go down without a fight. And while he may play the character of an international spy in his movies, I, I, I really am one. I'll keep that in mind. So, I'm sending Arif a message that says, I love him so much, I don't want to leave this earth without him. I need to see him at least one more time. That's beautiful. I guess now we're going to see how much he's into her. Nadra had left a suicide vest at the farmhouse. If Arif shows, will he be a rocking bomb? Not Arif's pattern. Oh, he preaches complete sacrifice to the cause for his uh, followers, but doesn't ever seem to practice what he preaches. It doesn't mean he won't be wired. We want him alive, but if there's any doubt or if he walks into a crowded place, take him out. Excuse me. Some man just offered me $500 to take your picture with his picture phone. And he said that if you were his friend, you wouldn't mind. Does this make any sense to you? Without turning your head or looking unnatural, listen to me. I'm FBI. Tell me where he is. He's drinking a coffee at the sidewalk cafe. He's got dark hair and intellectual glasses. Jack, you getting this? Target is possibly at the sidewalk cafe, dark hair, glasses. I have a visual. Last table on the right, beige coat, no tie. Slim, trim, and most importantly, he seems to have forgone the vest of the well-dressed suicide bomber. All raid agents, get ready to secure the area. Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? Yes, sir. Ah, don't move. No suicide vest, we are clear. You ready? Yeah. Nice to see you again, neighbor. We've missed you. I wanted to write, but I didn't have the FBI's address. Now you do. Have you kept in touch with Betty? Do you remember her, the wife you deceived and then abandoned? Irreconcilable differences. What about Najah Harat? She is in a much better place now. I'm not so sure about that. I want to speak to my consulate now. Show me a passport. Are you having a hard time deciding what country you're from today? I want to know your targets. Anyone with American blood. 
including women and children. I hope so. I've never seen that kind of evil. I have. Tara, I think I did it. What do you got? Stanley cracked more of the code. How they communicate from the auction site. We believe they're going to strike tomorrow at 2 o'clock. But not just with the cargo plane and the two tankers. We think they're going to try and hijack a merchant ship as well to blow up an entire harbor. Any idea where? Not exactly, but they did mention the Atlantic, so our best guess is somewhere along the East Coast. Land, sea, and air. A lot of biz to go through and not a whole lot of time to figure out what they mean. Where did Jack go? I don't know. He, he said he had an idea and he and Demetrius left. Maybe he went to make a bit of his own. It's Persian rugs of steel. Oh, I gotta get out of this room. Guys, Jack and Dia back. They want to see us. I've just been given clearance by the director of the bureau to give Arif Dessa the right to one phone call. Wait, whoa, whoa. You, you're giving one of the world's worst terrorists a chance to activate his terror cell? Desperate times require desperate measures. It's the only way we have a shot of finding his exact targets. He's right. We have over 50 possible targets for the plane, tankers, and freighter. But if Arif uses the call to give the final target, we have the code in place to decipher the exact location. The director signed off on that? Well, technically, yes. He said that we had the right to do it. What he didn't say was that he thought it was a good idea. We know Arif is a control freak. What if he hasn't given his final orders and our having him in custody has basically stopped the terror event? She could be right. There hasn't been any activity on BazaarBuy.com since we caught Arif. We know that the terrorists are all in place, and we know that they've practiced on multiple targets. It could be just as possible that they have a backup order to blow up whatever they want if they don't hear from Arif Dessa by a certain time. I'll say put him on the line. But how do we get him to really talk? How do we make him feel like we're not just setting him up? That's where you come in. This terror event goes through, you'll get the death penalty, and I will be happy to pull the switch. Great. Then many more American scum will die. Ah, ah, I'm thinking ah. we just skip that pesky trial. Let's save the taxpayers' money. We'll do things your way. We don't like you. You die. Ah, now, get your hands off of him! Sorry, Jack. I couldn't stop him. There's something called the Geneva Convention. We're not in Geneva. Hey, you're supposed stop. to be an observer. You got no right to be in here. Get somebody down here and get him out It doesn't now. matter who you think he is. He has the right to a consulate. Forget it. I said get out now! What is this? You think an American celebrity can protect me? You? Everything about you I despise. Yeah? Well, I despise you too. But I still defend your rights, and that's what makes you and I different. You get him a consulate, or I go on every news program in the world and tell them how the FBI tortures their detainees. That would be a breach of national security. I don't security. care! I'll put you in the cell right beside him, buddy. And I hold a press conference from that cell every day, buddy. Talk to his lawyer in Arabic. I'm just trying to find out if there's any kind of legal move to, to get him released. But he's also waiting in strings of numbers that connect to personal items. His, his parking space for his car is parked. Forwarding address for his belongings. It's code. Uh, uh, Tara, check bizarrebuy.com for any bids on items 331, 121, 551, and 722. Four bids from the same screen name on these numbers. Each bid went up two dollars. He's confirming the two o'clock strike time. Looks like he bought your act. Too bad the Oscar voters are never gonna see it. Our locations are the Golden Gate Bridge, Union Station in DC, Boston Harbor, and the final number doesn't correspond to any target that we've identified. 
Wait. I got it. It matches a file number in the flight simulator. It's New York. It's Yankee Stadium. It's a day game today. Starts at one. I'm gonna find the director and Homeland Security. Bobby, Miles, get a SWAT team and secure Union Station. I want the entire area evacuated. Have Metro PD shut down all traffic going into that area, and I want our surveillance planes up in the air. Notify the Coast Guard and the Port Authority. We need to stop all freighters going into Boston Harbor. Tara, call the FAA. Tell them to divert all flights going into New York and to ground all flights leaving. I'll establish a live feed which connects to the radar screens of the FAA and the Coast Guard. Lucy, get me the Pentagon. We need fighter jets over New York. Jack, we've got all traffic coming into DC stopped. A ring of traffic stopped at roadblocks all around Union Station. Our surveillance planes are flying mapping grids all over DC and no sign of our tanker. Are you sure Union Station is the right target? The Coast Guard boarded a hijacked oil freighter 50 miles out into the Atlantic, heading for Boston. It was wired to detonate on impact. Let all other agencies know. Tara, are you positive about Union Station? There's nothing approaching any of our roadblocks. SWAT in San Francisco just stopped a tanker truck heading toward the Golden Gate Bridge. Sue just confirmed Boston was right. It has to be there. Jack, an unauthorized aircraft has just entered US airspace from Toronto. It's heading directly to New York City. Put it up on the plasma. The plane transponder code is 442. Is that a legitimate flight? It's a Canadian Skyways flight, but this isn't its normal scheduled time. Check with FAA if that plane has left Canada yet. If not, we can bet it's one of our terrorists. Yeah, we believe all other targets are correct. Bobby! I think we might have some. Hang on. There is an old train repair depot a block behind the station. It's a perfect place to hide a tank. Maybe it's already here. You beauty. Jack, we've got to leave, mate. We're on the move. Let's go. Still in progress. The fighter pilots say it's a 727 cargo plane. They've tried to make radio contact. The pilots of the plane are silent. Jack, I've got the Attorney General online too. Special Agent Jack Hudson. Yes, sir, we're sure. Yes, sir. That's what I would do. Bucks says a month from now, somebody in the media will find something wrong with what we did. By the way, the Yankees are up 2 1. Jack didn't throw you out of the bullpen, did he? No. I was just thinking about perspective. I make my living saying words that someone else wrote. You all stop tankers and trucks and airplanes and save thousands of lives. And the people whose lives were saved would push you out of the way to meet me and get my autograph. Crazy world. You are a famous movie star and people do listen to what you have to say. Maybe the next time you go on one of those talk shows, 
You can use the opportunity to change someone else's perspective. Yeah. Do you think she'd give me her autograph? So I'm uh, just about to take my leave, and I just thought I would take this opportunity to say how much I enjoyed working with you again. Uh, not that I enjoy impending terrorist strikes. <clears throat> we understand what you mean. Um, <laughs> it was nice working with you, too. Appreciate all your help. Thanks. Um, if you could just excuse me for for one minute. So I saw what just happened. What? Oh, that. Yes, um, more precisely, that with him. So I said that I was going to fight for you. Stanley, I... Or you go on your date with Adam Kinsey. I'm not... You're, you're not, not, not what? Going out with Adam. I told him I had other plans. What, um, what other, other plans? I thought I might make a real spy, a real home-cooked meal, if he was interested. I mean, you, you turned down Adam Kinsey for me? Lucy told me what you said, about why you didn't write or call. You did it for me, you didn't think it was fair. Very sweet. Very stupid. But, but sweet. Well, maybe not as stupid or, or, or as sweet as turning down Adam Kinsey for me. I've always been a little out of step with popular culture. <laughs> you, you've come to the right place because nobody's more out of step than me. I haven't even seen any of his movies. So, what do you say? You hungry? Uh, even a real spy's gotta eat. Right? Drum roll, please. This year's award for best actor in an FBI thing goes to Adam Kinsey. Hey! We call it a Kinsey after its first and only Recipient. Yay! Speech! Speech! Thank you. This is truly a great honor. And so I would like to thank you all. And particularly my acting coach, Jack. Oh, this looks like the beginnings of a beautiful friendship. Actors and FBI agents seeing eye to eye. I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. You'll regret it, Adam. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But if you do regret it, don't apologize. Because love means never having to say you're sorry. And love's a many splendored thing. What? That's a movie thing. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Hey. Watch it. Or I'll get you, my pretty. And your little doggy, too. No! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>